let's have a look at question 12, which is a pretty, pretty standard trig question, in fact. They tell you about, about a triangle. They don't show it to you. Which, by the way, if, you, can you, if you're having a look at someone's paper and there's no diagram on there, the first thing I would like you to write is, no diagram, question mark, exclamation mark. Like, why would you not draw a diagram for this? Um, because when they don't give that to you, part of what they're determining is, do you have the spatial reasoning to work out what on earth is happening? Okay? They tell you about this triangle, and then they give you some facts. A couple of angles and a side. So let's try to build this thing together. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is, being that it's not necessarily going to need to be precise, I'm going to draw a triangle that looks vaguely uh, in, in sort of the right dimensions. Okay? And uh, it's called ABC, so I'm just going to call this A, this B, this C. If there's no diagram on the paper that you're marking, please draw something roughly equivalent to this. And then I'm going to start to supply information that's been provided to me onto the diagram. Okay? So we get an angle. It's 30 degrees. Where does it go on my diagram? On my diagram. A. Where does it go? ABC. ABC. That's, that's the one at B, right? Remember? It's like, this is back to year 7. How do we name angles, right? So uh, 30 degrees? 30 degrees. Fantastic. So there's 30. The next angle they give us is 45. What's the name of that angle? ACB. ACB. So it's the one at the top. Okay, so let's pop that in as 45. And then they give us a length. From memory, it's 8 centimeters. Where's that? AC. So AC. So that's this guy over here on the left hand side. And then the question they ask us is determine the length of? AB. So that's this guy down here. Now I could give it another letter, X, but you know what? I can just call it AB. Like AB is a way to describe it. I don't need to add more notation. I'd rather have as little as I can. Okay? Now you have a look at the information that's presented to you. Which piece, and I'm already telling you it's trigonometry, but which piece of trigonometry is going to help us here? Sinal. The sine rule. Fantastic. How could you tell? Sorry? What was the clue? Um, you're missing one side, so then um, typically the questions have one side missing and one full equation. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So you can actually look, if, if this is like not triggering things in your brain, right? You can look at the reference sheet. You've got the cosine rule there, you've got the sine rule. Um, we would usually write the sine rule something like this. Uh, a on sine A equals B on sine B. Right? This might be a way, in fact I can't, maybe it's upside down on the reference sheet, something like that, right? Okay. Now you can see here that the knowns and unknowns fit perfectly into what the sine rule presents to us, right? Um, and I kind of look at it as a shape. Some of you might even have done this on your diagram. Can you see there's an angle? and it's opposite a known side, like so. And then you have another angle, and it's opposite the unknown side. So this sort of crossover shape is your big clue to use the sine rule. Okay. Now before I start to launch into things, I know I'm finding out A, B. Is there anything else in the question that I should be aware of? Any important stuff? Exact value. No. Very good, exact value. So this is not going to come in until later, but it is going to affect the way that I solve the question. Okay. So let's start. Maybe you're checking to see um, what kind of response there. The unknown is the thing you want to put first because it makes it easier to, less rearranging, right? So my unknown is AB divided by what? Sine. Sine. Well, the angle opposite it, right? So in that case, it's 45 degrees. Sine 45 equals, and then I've got a known side and a known angle. So it's going to be 8 on? Sine 30. Fantastic. Now, if you have your exact values up your sleeve, right, you could do this lickety split. Maybe you need the reference sheet to help you. Uh, sine 45, what is that? Sine 45 degrees? It starts with a 1. It's 1 on, 1 on root 2, thank you. And then this guy over here, sine 30. Come on, this is like the easiest one, right? This is 1 over 2, it's a half. Okay, so from there, once you've got these numbers in place, you can just rearrange. We should end up at 8 root 2. Did you get that? Give me a nod, give me a shake, give me something. Who got 8 root 2? Or who's marking a paper that has 8 root 2? No. Really? Really, guys. I picked this one because it was the easy one. Did you? Yeah? OK, all right. That's, is that John's? Yeah. Way to go, John. OK, so it sounds like you need a bit of help getting to that point. Let's, let's go further. OK, so I've got A, B on 1 on root 2. And then I've got 8 on a half. Is that OK? You've got to be quite tricky with the, careful with these tricky fractions on fractions. That's why I've got so many brackets flying around. Okay? So then when I go over to the right-hand side, because I want AB to be the subject. Right? For starters, 8 divided by a half. How many halves are in 8? The answer is? Four. Two. Two halves of 4. 
So this sounds like why only John got a root 2. Okay, 8 divided by a half, you can think about it a bunch of different ways. You can think about it as 8 divided by a half. You just do your algorithm, right? You turn it into multiplication and take your reciprocal. It's 8 times 2, right? Um, or you can say how many halves are in 8, well, you're going to go a half and then 1 and then 1 and a half and then two. You're going to get up to 16 of them, right? So I'm getting 16. That's, that's that part. But to get this over on the other side, I've got to multiply by one on root two. Is that okay? So maybe we got caught by the fact that there's just so many fractions flying around. 16 divided by root two, um, you can break up 16 into, think about this, right? This is eight times two on root two, but two divided by root two, the definition of root two is that's root two, right? Or if you wanted to think about it this way, 2 is just root 2 times root 2. Is that, are you content with that? So then you can say cancel, cancel, and you're here. Okay, what were the units again? Centimeters, Centimeters right? So, okay, yeah. The way I did it was way different. Did you, get, did you get the right answer? I didn't do exact values. Okay, so I, there was a problem. I actually punched into my calculator like normal. So when you, what did you punch into your calculator? Like, yeah, you did this stuff. Okay, so you've got. Uh, I'm guessing what root two is one point four ish. So it's what did you get? Eleven point three. Yeah, which is which is right, isn't it? But not exact. How many marks do you think, Serang? Just out of curiosity, how many marks do you guys think Serang would get for that answer, being that it is actually equivalent to a root two? One. I, I'd say one's a pretty good bet. I, we actually have the marking guidelines over here, um, so we can we can find out, but. Because they specify it's an exact value, you can see that's actually one of the big things they're trying to assess. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so this is really interesting, right? Now let's, let's think about, uh, I'm going to write down 6.8. Question mark, okay? Now, I'm looking at our diagram here, and I can immediately tell, even though I'm not 100% sure where this has come from, I can immediately tell, and I want you to think about this, because this is an exam technique, right? I can immediately tell this can't be right. If I got arrived at this answer, I know I've done something wrong earlier on. Okay? And I wonder if you can work out. Nothing to do with all my working here. I'm just looking at the diagram. Again, when I say no diagram, why? Can anyone suggest to me why 6.8 can't possibly be the answer? What do you reckon, John? Because AB is bigger than This is the length we're trying to find out, AB, right? Uh, I don't know how long it is. But I know for sure, as John says, it has to be longer than this side. How did, how did John know that? Where you got that from, Tava? Yeah, very good. The angles, right? This is the whole point of the sign rule, in fact. The whole point of it is, as the angle gets bigger, the corresponding side, or I should say the opposite side, also gets bigger. And like, just think about this, right? Can you just put your hands out in front of you, right? And make an angle, okay? Just literally do this with me, okay? If you imagine your two hands as like the sides of a triangle, right? As you increase the size of the angle, widen out your hands now, right? The side that's opposite is like between your index fingers. Do you see that? Well, clearly your side's getting bigger, yeah? So if you can put your hands down now because you look hilarious. If you've got a bigger angle over here, 45 degrees, then this angle over here, 30 degrees, it's got to be bigger than 8. I've done something wrong. I'm not sure what it is yet, but something's gone awry. We can check it out. 